Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to part three of Direwolf20's Mod Spotlight on Psy. Today, I'm gonna to show you some of the advanced stuff that you can do with Psy, provided that you get a little bit into vectors. Now, I don't wanna scare you guys off. Vectors really aren't that hard. They're actually pretty easy to play with. Um, however, they do require a little bit of math. So I'm gonna to spend today making sure you guys are all ready to learn about vectors. And one of the ways I'm gonna do that is to show you one of the cool things you can do with vectors, which is this. This spell I just cast built this little underground pathway. How cool is that? I dig it, um, pun intended. So what I'm gonna do is um, combine a couple different mechanics to show you guys what you can do uh, with Psy. Another thing that I've done is uh, this nifty thing here, which should be this. Uh, I created a spell that makes stairs. Nice, how cool is that, huh? That is neat. So all kinds of cool tricks you can do once you get the hang of vectors and Psy. There's a lot of nifty, powerful spells. Um, I can't wait to show you, so let's get started talking about vectors. Again, I don't want you to be scared. They're really not hard, it's basic math, but um, it just is a little different than the normal math you're probably used to dealing with. So let's get vectors going. So I brought myself down to 000, or 010 to be accurate, because I don't wanna fall into the void, um, to tell you guys more about vectors and give you the real concept of them. So in the past, I explained a vector as simply a coordinate in space. So if we were to uh, clear out this guy, and we just wrote a debug spell that said, get the entity position of the caster, right? So target is entity position, caster, right? Easy peasy. And we're going to call that test. Okay. Then I'm going to place into this bullet here. Uh, I'll get test two out of there for now. Um, the test spell. By the way, there's a new feature to Psy, new since part two of the spotlight that I'll show you guys in a minute. But for now, we're going to cast the test, right? And what that does is it gives me the vector of the entity position of the player, which as you might notice, pretty well matches what I'm at. Um, it factors probably into my head position instead of uh, my feet position. So that's why the Y vector is 4.6 instead of three that you see up there. Now in reality, a vector is not a point in space. A vector is actually a line from zero, zero to that point in space. So imagine I'm standing up here, right? So to make this easy, let's pretend that we are at zero, zero, right? So like right about here and we went up, for example, right? So now, if we were to fire this test spell, we would see I'm at, you know, because of decimals in Minecraft, the way it calculates coordinates, but I'm pretty much at 0, 0, 006. What this is, is the vector is not the block at 0, 0, 006. The vector is, in fact, the line that goes from 0, 0, 0 up to 0, 0, 006, 0. Okay, so that's pretty much what a vector is, is it's a line from the 0, 0, 0 coordinates of the world to that point. But it's described in math because you always know where 0, 0 is and it's easy for you to imagine in your head how that line would look going up to whatever coordinate system you're at, right? So you can just imagine a line going up there. So that's kind of an important concept. It's a little bit different than just the coordinates, but when it's written, it's written as just coordinates and the user's supposed to just be able to do in their head and be like, oh yeah, that's probably just a line coming from there to me. Right? So just imagine a little line of blocks running up from 0, 0, 0 up to where my head is. Cool? Awesome. So let's learn about doing some vector math. If we were to take a look at the uh, chapter 5 for vectors, you'll see there's a lot of different maths. Most of these are actually really easy once you understand the basics. Let's do a simple one, vector sum. This takes two vectors. All vector sum does is add both sets of numbers, okay? Really easy. So, for example, if we were gonna remove this trick debug, right, and we did vector sum, okay? We'll start with the player's position, and then we will add, and we're gonna do a vector construct. This is basically a way, and I think I explained this a little bit, um, vector construct lets you just say exactly what vector you wanna do, right? So I'm gonna do um, a vector sum with a vector construct, of, to make things easy, one, 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 okay? So when we add these two vectors, we take my position and we add one to the X, Y, and Z numbers. That's all there is to it, very simple. So let's do two things. I'm gonna do a debug on that. And then I'm also, um, and we have to give this guy the X, Y, and Z. The other thing I'm gonna do is do a place block, okay? And we will say the position will be that vector sum. 
Okay, so real easy. Uh, let's get that spell bullet in there. And uh, let's actually call this test two. And here's the other trick, right? Um, that is probably, I don't know which one that is. So let's just take that out. I'll show you the neat trick in a minute, right? So if I'm here, right, my position is two, three, zero, right? Okay, that's the test spell, right? Two, four point six, negative zero, right? So let's cast test two now. See how the numbers changed? All the numbers went plus one. Neat, right? That is cool. So uh, one block above, one block to the right, and one block plus one is there. Neat. So it placed that block right there. And every time I cast it, it's gonna be there. Now, if I move to the left a little bit, um, it should cast it, there we go, in that position, right? So I went down one as well, but you get the gist, right? So that's vector sum, super easy. All it is is you take all the numbers in this vector and add all the numbers in this vector, right? Cool. So guess what vector subtract does? You probably guessed already. Just remember when you're subtracting, you wanna subtract your position minus 111, right? Not 111 minus your position, that's gonna be a different number, remember? You know, basic math, right? So um, if we are again standing here, and check this out. Um, if I shift right click with the um, thing in here, it should have overwritten. That should be cool. Did that overwrite or no? Nope, not yet. Okay, so I'm gonna have to test that a little bit differently. Well, let's swap this out now. There we go. Now when I cast, it should go, where did it go? There we go, it went down, forward, and to the right. So instead of going up and to the left behind me, it went forward and to the right below me. Cool? So that's a vector subtract, real easy. So the next uh, types of vectors I wanna talk about are vector multiply and divide. You'll notice that unlike add and subtract, which take multiple vectors, multiply and divide take a vector and a number. So the important difference here is when you add two vectors together, what you're doing is you're taking the numbers in vector one and adding them to the numbers in vector two. When you do multiply and divide, you take the vector and multiply all three numbers by um, the multiplication or the divide number, right? So let's clear out this table, okay? And we're going to do another debug. So let's do vector multiply, right? So that would be vector multiply, where are you at? Always a little tricky to find these things sometimes. There it is, vector multiply. Uh, so a vector and a number. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna construct a vector to make things easy to demonstrate, right? So we'll do vector construct. We will make it uh, zero, one, zero, okay? And then we're gonna vector multiply that times, let's say three, okay? Easy enough. So now um, what I'm gonna do is do a debug on that so we can see what number comes out. Easy? Cool. Um, so you're gonna do vector and number, and we will call this test three. New thing that you can do, um, if you just right click on the CAD with your gun, so see how test two is my currently selected bullet? Now test three is uh, in there. So it overwrote the bullet in the gun by right clicking on the CAD. Awesome. All right, so what's this gonna do? Um, it should start, okay, with uh, the vector construct here doing a one, and then it's gonna multiply every digit by three. So we should get zero, three, zero. Ready? Boom, zero, three, zero. Nice and easy, right? Now if we make this a one, or actually we'll make this a two, just to demonstrate, right? So the X is a two now, so let's update our gun. Six, three, zero, because two times three is six, and one times three is three. Pretty straightforward, that's vector uh, multiply. The other thing we can do is uh, vector divide, right? So we'll make this a four, and we'll make this a vector divide by two. Vector, number, easy peasy, one and two, right? Two divided by two is one, four divided by two is two. That's all there is to vector multiply and divide. So let's talk about the look vectors, right? There's actually two types of them available, entity look and entity axial look. And what I've done here is I've set them both to target the caster, right? And we're gonna output them both. Output number one in debug is gonna be the axial look. 
Output number two is going to be the look vector. Um, so look vector is two, axial look is uh, this one, and let's call this test four, and boom. Let's do that. So what are we going to get here? When I right click this guy, we're going to see two vectors. Number one is the axial look. Number two is the direct look. Axial look will find one axis, the one that you're closest to looking at, and always choose just that one. So see how my entity axial look is negative one, zero, zero, and my entity look is like a large string of numbers, right? Because I'm looking kind of in this downwardish direction, right? So I'm kind of looking here. Now, as I go to the right here, notice that it's my Z coordinate that's changing. And see how, as I go forward there, like my Z is going down. So basically axial look is a good way to find the direction you're facing without all those little extra numbers. It kind of, it's like rounding it almost and just saying you're looking in that direction, period. Like not worrying about the slightly downward things, right? So now if I were looking at this block down here, my axial look would probably target that piece of block right in front of me, right? Or maybe that one, okay? Um, that's pretty close right there, right? Um, but if I want to get my axial look, it's there. If I want to get the exact block I'm looking at, it's number two, okay? So that's important because we're going to see something in a minute that's going to do some vector math that's going to be very useful with entity axial look. A really useful vector math is vector cross product. And what this does is cool. We're going to do a vector construct, okay? Um, and we're going to do uh, 0, 1, 0. And we're going to get basically the upwards vector, okay? And then we're going to cross product it with these two. And you are going to be target is caster, okay? Um, and I'm going to debug this guy. Cool. And we will call this number two. Got it? So what this does, let's update to test four, okay? Um, vector cross product is very useful because what it does is it takes the cross product of two vectors and gives you the third. We're in 3D space, right? So we can either be on the X coordinate, see how my Xs are changing in my F3, or on the Y coordinate, or uh, Z, I'm sorry. So Z coordinate here, Z is changing, or Y. Okay, vector cross product, you give it two of those and it tells you what the third one is. So if I give it the X and the Y, it's gonna give me Z. If I give it Z and Y, it's gonna give me X. Cool, so let's cast and see. I'm currently, um, number one is my axial look, number two is the opposite vector, right? Boom, cool. So currently, I'm looking along the x-axis. See how my x is changing because that's the direction I'm facing? So axial look is the z-axis, okay? Now, if I were to reverse that and look along the z-axis, notice how the numbers changed, right? This time, it's one in the vector because I'm looking positive in the, or uh, yeah, I'm looking in the z-axis, right? Um, sorry, no, that should probably be backward, but you get it, right? So negative one in z, right? That's this one, and now my, um, cross product is the x-axis. So that's this one. Cool? So vector cross product is really nice because you can do a bunch of cool stuff with this, right? You can not only get the direction you're looking, but you can get the uh, direction you're not looking, basically, because we're combining with the y1, right? So y1 is up. So basically, you say, here's the direction I'm looking. Here's y up is the constant. So give me the other axis. Well, that must be this one. Straightforward. So the next spell to show you, vector normalize. What this does is it takes any vector and makes its length one. So it just truncates it, right? Like it says, like I'm cutting you off at a length of one, regardless of where you are. Um, a tricky way to demonstrate that is by doing this. Number one debug there is my X, Y, Z coordinates. Number two is the vector normalize of my X, Y, Z coordinates. And if you look at them, um, they'll probably add up to one length if uh, you, know, you were really good at figuring out how that works out. A better way to demonstrate this probably is um, to do something like uh, vector construct um, with zero, uh, five, and zero, right? So this would output five, but since we're normalizing it to a length of one, it's gonna output y1. The next one's also very easy. Vector negate negates a vector. Basically makes, swaps the negative and positive sign. So x1, y negative five, um, z6 when cast, x negative one, y positive five, z negative six, cool?
So remember a little bit ago, we set the vector magnitude to be one with the normalize. Well, now we can figure out what a vector magnitude is by doing operator vector magnitude. Um, just give it a target vector and it outputs a number, right? So that's pretty much the length of the vector, right? So if your uh, vector was zero, five, zero, you would expect the length to be five. Nice. Um, now, if your vector was um, five, five, zero, your vector length is gonna be a little bit different. Cool, and if this were here, got it? So that's pretty much the length, like how distant it is from zero, zero to that position. And the last three that we haven't talked about just yet are really, really simple operator vector extract X. All it does is extract the, uh, just the X, Y, Z and returns the number, right? So uh, if we tried this, right, we could do, um, we'll make this one, two, three, and we will do vector extract just do the y one, for example, two, right? So it just said, what's the y coordinate? That's all there is to it. All right, Dyer, after all, vector math wasn't as hard as I thought it was. It's really just some addition and subtraction and multiplication and division. Let's do some cool stuff with it, shall we? Uh, what I wanna do is demonstrate a couple of the spells that I made. Step loop, uh, which is the first one I'm gonna talk about, is gonna go and do this. It uses a loop cast bullet, which means that it's going to execute a set of instructions in a loop, and it's gonna keep executing it until I remove the gun from my currently held device. So how does it work? Well, here's the spell step loop, okay? I'm going to export this to the clipboard and import it over here, and we're gonna mess around with it to show you it. So remember, the loop cast is gonna execute a set of steps in a loop. So let's remove the loop to make things easier, and then we will put the loop back in, and you'll see how everything works. I'm gonna be demonstrating a lot of the mechanics that we just talked about, so hopefully you followed along throughout the first half of the spotlight. So I've pretty much taken the spell and broke it down into some basic composite parts. Right now, instead of doing the trick that places a block in sequence, I'm doing place block. I wanna place a single block. So let's break down what our goal is, right? First, let's try and get it to place three blocks on the ground in front of me in a row, right? So to do that, let's start with the basics. Let's just get it to place one of those on the ground in front of me. And then we'll upgrade to sequence so that it'll place three per cast, right? So what I've done is I've created this spell. What it's gonna do is it's gonna take a sum, right? It's gonna combine two vectors. The first vector it's gonna to wanna to do is figure out the vector cross product of my axial look of the caster and y equals one. Okay, if you remember, axial look is I'm looking in this direction and y1 is this direction, right? Okay, so the axi so the vector cross product of that should be here, right? Sort of. There's one little mistake there and I'll let you guys figure out what it is over the next three seconds before I cast the spell. You ready? Here goes nothing. Boom. Oh, it wasn't on the ground, it was right next to my head. Remember, your coordinates are from your head, not your feet, so uh, I need to do something to get it to go down one, don't I? Probably true. So let's change it up, right? So right now I'm getting me. Let's get me minus one on the Y. That seems easy enough, right? So let's do another vector uh, sum, I wanna say. Okay, and we will say the first vector will be my position minus, we'll say vector construct one on the Y. This will be X, Y, and Z, cool? And we are gonna be combining these two vectors, right? And this will be this one and this one, cool? So now we're doing a sum between first, we're gonna figure out my position uh, or my vector cross product of my look and Y one. So that'll get the to the left bit. Right. Then we're gonna combine my position, but we're gonna subtract one from the Y. So basically my position minus one on the Y. Not a bad idea. You know what? Mm, yeah, that's probably good for now. Let's do it. Ready? There we go. Look, it placed it down instead of at my head. Perfect. So let's replace place block with place block sequence. So my position that I'm gonna start at is the same. I want it to start there, but I want it to continue along here, right? Shouldn't be too hard. Let's give it a shot. Um, what I'm gonna do is place um, an addition here. So basically we wanna do in a different direction a little bit. So what we really wanna do is start here and then go over basically and have a total of three blocks, right? 
So what we can do is if this, for example, is negative one right here, then this would be positive one, right? So which vector can we figure out to get from here to here? Probably might want to use a vector negate of this cross product, right? So let's get a negate. We'll draw the line up here. So if this vector cross product gives us negative one on the Z, vector negate will give us plus one on the Z, right? Negative one on the Z, plus one on the Z. And if it's the X, it would be negative one on the X to plus one on the X. Pretty tricky? Yeah, so far we're getting the hang of this, right? Um, so the um, target here, but we really want this to be a little bit different so let's try well let's try it first and see what happens you ready so we're gonna do left here and that should be cool and now our max will say the most blocks I want you to place is three so let's see what happens you ready hey it didn't really work what happened so the best way to figure out what happened is to throw a debug on your vector negate and just see what number that's coming up with negative one interesting okay I bet I know what's going on um, we might want to do a multiply times let's uh, use the three again here so that's number and vector here let's see if that works and we're going to debug on the multiply ready hey now we're talking we got it going because we wanted to basically go from um you know here to here so how can we explain what's happening and why we needed this three it basically comes down to here I'm adding my player position, right? So the place that I start placing them is my player pl position, um, pretty much minus one on either the X or the Z, depending on which direction I'm looking because I'm using entity uh, cross product here with the axial look, right? Um, once that starts getting placed, it needs to know relative to that how far to go. So we're basically saying go three blocks um, in the opposite direction from the one that you would normally be going for placing the block. So normally we would start here. We want to negate that direction. So we want to start going this way and we multiply by three to say we're going three blocks over because we start here and then we don't want to go just one. We want to go three in total. So now let's modify it so it builds out a line in front of me, right? Because we don't want these stairs to just be placed. Right, and that's it, we're not done here, right? So we wanna include loop casting, which we saw in part two, and we're also going to wanna move forward and upwards. Let's tackle moving forward first. So here we're adding um, the vector cross product of where I'm looking and the Y, so we know that that's you know, one to the left, right? And then we're adding in um, to the Y axis minus one, so it places it on the ground. What we wanna do is head forward in the direction that I'm looking, right? So let's utilize the axial look that we've already placed. And instead here, I'm gonna remove these and put a caster here so that we can place stuff up above, okay? What I'm gonna do is put down a vector multiply, okay? Um, and we're gonna add this to the existing vector. That vector multiply will be my axial look times the loop cast. Okay, so what this does is the first time I cast this spell, it's gonna be my axial look, let's say it's x1, okay, um, times the loop cast is one. So that's going to add x1 to where it's placing the first set of blocks, right? Then the next time it's loop cast index two. So my axial look is still x1, loop cast second time I cast times two, so now it's x plus two. Third time I cast, x plus three. Fourth time I cast, x plus four. You get it, right? So let's get ourselves a loop cast. I think this is a loop cast, cool. And we'll call this step demo loop, just so we know the difference between the two spells we've been working on. And if I've done this right, it should create a line of blocks directly in front without going up on uh, step demo loop, without going up, right? So we're just modifying the direction I'm looking. Cool, right? Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. So again, just to reinforce, um, what we're doing here is every time we cast uh, the spell, the loop of the spell, we're adding in the direction I'm looking times the number of times I've cast it. So the first time I cast, it's x plus one. The second time I cast, it's x plus two. The third time I cast, it's x plus three. And it's this block that's getting x plus one, two, three. But then um, in addition to that, we 
uh, have the vector place block sequence here that says move over three every time. So it goes here, moves over three, x plus one over three, x plus two over three. Cool. Now let's factor in the last set of instructions. I'm just going to jump straight to the finalized spell and show you guys how this works. So basically, we want to add one to the y-axis every time we cast the spell, in addition to adding one to the x or z, depending on what direction I'm looking, right? We want it to keep going up. Really easy, right? All we have to do is a sum, right? So this isn't a vector sum. This is just normal old add two numbers together, right? So instead of taking y minus one and always placing it below my head, we're going to do um, y minus one plus the loop cast index, okay? That's all there is to it. So now we're saying the first time we cast, it's y minus one. The second time we cast, it's y zero. The next time it's y plus one. The next time it's y plus two, okay? You ready? Let's update this spell and see if it worked, right? Nice, it totally worked until I ran out of cobblestone. So, Every time we cast, we're adding one to the X or Z, depending on what direction I'm looking, and we're adding one to the Y. So we just built a stairs spell. If any part of that tutorial was confusing to you guys, I definitely recommend pausing the video that you were just watching and throw in a bunch of trick debugs. This will totally help you understand how things are working. And just like I did in part one of the video, go ahead and do a lot of this math without doing the place block sequence. Just Remove place block sequence and throw trick debug in there, right? Like easy peasy. Like if I just did this and did, um, you know, if we did a debug here, done, right? Now instead of placing blocks, we're doing debugs and we'll be able to see, right? So my look direction, let's make it x plus one, right? So let's make it x plus one just so the demonstration I've been saying of x plus one every time works. When I cast this, See how every time the loop goes through, that vector becomes x plus one, right? So we went zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. And if I really wanted to do this properly, I should have removed the other debug. So x and y are increasing every time, right? See how that works? So throw trick debugs in there. It will definitely help you understand the math behind the vector stuff. Cool? So my step down spell, which I'm going to put on the screen here for a minute, this is the one that digs that tunnel underground one step at a time and lets you, you know, build an awesome staircase. This is the one I'm going to just leave on the screen. It's a little bit hard to explain. It's very similar, though, to my stair casting one because really... All we're doing is instead of building stairs up, we're building stairs down. The only difference is that we want more headway, right? So if I pop over here, you'll notice if I had just placed stairs down everyone, we would have, you know, something like uh, some line of blocks here, right? And then you would wind up with something like this, right? So you don't want that. You want to actually um, make it so that you have about what I've done is one, two, three, four sets of Y directional casting for every one set of X or Z, right? So basically we go down four and over one, but we wanna go back up a little bit so we can go down again, right? And then over one, back up a little bit and down again. That's where some of the more complex math happens. And believe it or not, the complex math here is just basic numbers. It's not the vector math that you have to worry about tweaking. Um, so I'm gonna real quick explain the differences here. So get a pen and paper ready or something. So the step down V2, really pretty much the same thing, except I'm doing break block sequence instead of place block sequence. But you'll notice we've got the vector negate and the three here. We've got this whole thing going on. Um, we've got the operator entity axial look for the caster. We've got Y1. So a lot of this is similar. Vector multiply, the differences here are that when we do the vector multiply, we want to do constant plus one. And that's, remember, the X or Z coordinate, right? Whatever direction we're looking in, we're multiplying that. And we're doing loop cast index integer to divide four. What that means is it divides by four, but it rounds it. So it always gets an integer, right? So if we were to demonstrate this with a casting table, okay? If we said debug integer divide loop cast index four, Loop cast index divided by four. 
and we tested this, see how every four it goes up one? Because it's doing integer divide. So index zero divided by four is zero. One divided by four is zero. Two divided by four. Three divided by four. Four divided by four is one. Five divided by four, six, seven, eight divided by four is two, right? Mm. So that basically means that we want to, every fourth time the spell has cast, move forward in the direction that we're looking, right? So that's how it, you know, cast four times, broke four sets of Y level blocks, and then moved forward one, okay? Over here, a little bit more complex. Uh, we're doing the subtract minus one and we're doing the loop cast index, but we're also subtracting a third number, um, which is basically, again, we're doing the integer divide of four, but then we wanna multiply it times negative three, and that's what allows us to um, basically go back up two before we go back down three again, right? So it's, it's basically saying something like, every four, um, you know, multiply times negative three, right? So, Multiply times negative three, boom, boom, boom. So that's gonna adjust it so that it's minus negative three. So it's basically plus three. So it goes up three and then boom, boom, boom. It goes up four, boom, boom, boom. So it kind of goes up every other time. It's a little tricky to explain. Definitely recommend you guys try it. But that's the gist of how I made the spell that builds stairs going down. Pretty cool, right? So that's some of the advanced stuff you can do with Psy. Obviously, if you think about it, there is a ton of advanced stuff. Placing and breaking blocks is just the beginning. You can move blocks, remember, because there's that piston type spell. And then, of course, there is the positive and negative effects you can place on players and entity, move entities around. The possibilities are limitless, but you just got to get in and start playing with it. So that's my recommendation to you guys. Get in and start playing with it. If this seemed overwhelming to you, stop. Don't say I can't do it. I guarantee you guys you can do this. All you gotta do is give it a try. Start simple. Start with spells like this that just do simple math and output the debugs and make sure you understand how it's working. Then move on to slightly more complex spells that just place a single block or two at a time, right? And go from there. I promise you'll figure it out if you try. Um, for now, Daryl20 is signing off part three of the Psy Spotlight. I think this will wrap up the Spotlight for now until Vasky adds more stuff. I know there's some new things coming. Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to tell you what it is, but you know, you've seen tools. What else might you expect if a mod adds tools? Maybe there's something that the mod might be having soon. I don't know, but we'll see. For now, I'm gonna wrap up the spotlight. We will have a future update once new stuff is in. If you wanna see more cool spells, definitely recommend that you check out um, my Forgecraft series where I'll be using this mod a bit and some other cool stuff. Um, but for now, Daryl20 signing off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.